Hey students, welcome to another week of student ministry content online. Uh, man, I don't even know what week we are at of this whole quarantine social distance thing. Eight, nine, 27, maybe a couple years. I'm honestly not sure. This, this thing is nuts. But hopefully you have heard that uh, there is a very slim chance that the finish line is in sight. That hopefully uh, before all is said and done, before too, too long, we will get to hang out together as a student ministry family uh, in the student building. Uh, that day cannot come soon enough for me. I'm sure it cannot come soon enough for you as well. And so probably when you're watching this right now, you are uh, anticipating the end of school. You're anticipating the beginning of summer. And obviously summer, uh, as we've announced, is gonna look way different uh, than anything that we've planned, than anything you've planned. But here's the great news. Um, it's gonna go exactly according to God's plan. And so we've got some exciting things that we're planning, we're working on. Um, it is going to be an awesome summer, regardless of all the disruptions, regardless of all the cancellations. We're still gonna do our best to give you an incredible summer. Now, Krista did a phenomenal job last week uh, finishing up our series, Jesus, Jesus and Culture. And so today, my job is to begin a brand new series uh, that will kind of take us through the end of this spring semester. And it's all about your image, okay? Now, when we talk about your image, um, we're not just talking about what you see when you look at yourself in a mirror or uh, what you see when you wake up first thing in the morning. When I say your image, here's the reality. Each one of you have an image that you are trying to project. You have an image that you're trying to portray and communicate to the world around you. There's many ways that you do this. You can project your image based on uh, how you dress. You can project your image based on the things that you put on social media or don't put on social media. But the reality is each one of us are brand managers. You have a brand and I have a brand. I have a message that I'm trying to communicate. You have a message that you're trying to communicate to the world. You think about so many popular brands, right? Like like Nike, like Adidas, uh, like McDonald's, Burger King, Whataburger, all of these places are brands. They have followings, they have messages that they're trying to communicate, and they definitely manage that communication, right? Uh, Whataburger is not going to communicate a bad message about their food, right? That's counterintuitive, that goes against what they're trying to accomplish. Well, Today, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this video, we're gonna talk about your image and how ultimately image is everything, right? Now, the question then becomes, what image are you trying to portray? What image are you trying to communicate to the world? Are you trying to communicate your image, your brand? Is that what you're trying to further? Or are you trying to communicate and further Christ's image? In Christ's mission and his plan. So let's dig deeply into God's word this morning or this afternoon or this evening, regardless of where you're watching this video. Um, because here's the truth. The truth is that so many of the people that we see online, on, on TV, on social media, whatever, they are communicating mixed messages at best. And most of the time they're communicating awful messages. That's just the truth, okay? And so what we want to do then is, is look at God's word and say, how do I, as a student, how do you, as a teenager, how do you communicate Christ's message? How do you live your life? And ultimately, how do you rep him? Instead of repping yourself, repping somebody else, how do you rep him? That is what we are concerned about in this first lesson of this first week of Jesus in your image. Because here's the truth, like you think about uh, you think about history. You think about so many people that made a mark on history who were no longer really in the picture. You know, there's this big documentary right now about Michael Jordan happening on ESPN. And so, so many people are enamored by Michael Jordan, myself included, because he is arguably the best basketball player that has ever stepped foot on planet Earth, right? His competitiveness, his drive, his ability to win, it's really second to none. But what we've seen, if you've watched that documentary, is that, and I don't necessarily recommend it, this is not my official endorsement of it, okay, because there's, there's tons of objectionable things in that documentary. But here's one of the things that we've learned about Michael Jordan. What he could do on a basketball court back in the day, 10, 20 years ago, 
not the same Michael Jordan today. Now, can he knock down some buckets? Absolutely. But is he able to compete at the level at which he was able to compete 20 years ago? Absolutely not. Why do I say that? Because so many of the things that we value, some of the image, so many of the images, the brands that we, we value and put trust in and care about, they're here today, gone tomorrow. So even you think about your social media feed, if you have social media, okay? You very intentionally pick what you post, right? You're not going to post a, an Insta story about how you completely stabbed your friend in the back. You're not gonna make a Facebook post or tweet something that talks about you failing and, and completely just messing up historically. Why? Because we want to put, we, we think that social media should be our highlight reel, right? Like all of the awesome things that I do on a daily basis or cool stories or things that happen to me, I want to project that. I want to communicate that to the world because I'm trying to write a narrative. Now, you are no different than I am. Okay, I'm, I'm older than you, obviously, but you are trying to communicate and project a narrative as well. So how do we make sure that the images that we're projecting, the narrative that we're trying to communicate, the brand that we're repping is Jesus and not ourselves. Because if it's anything other than Jesus, it's temporary. It's gonna fade away with time. Jesus is timeless. He's eternal, okay? So in God's word in Mark chapter eight, uh, we've got two quick little passages I wanna talk about right now. Mark chapter eight, actually, Mark chapter eight is the second passage. I jumped the gun. John chapter three is actually the first passage. Okay, so John three, I'm gonna just read it, starting in verse 27, this is what scripture says. It says, this is John the Baptist uh, speaking, and he says, John answered, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. And then John the Baptist says something very interesting that I want to key in on. He says, he must increase, but I must decrease. So what do we learn from this? What, what does it mean when John says in chapter or in verse 27, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven? Well, ultimately, John the Baptist is identifying and, and realizing and, and confirming something that all of us know to be true, but we don't always live that way. And that is this, that God gives us everything that we have. And so every opportunity that you have, every uh, thing that happens to you, um, it's an opportunity for you to make much of Jesus. And so John uh, skips down in verse 30 and he says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Now, you think about John the Baptist, right? This dude was wild. He lived in the desert. He ate locusts and honey. His clothes were definitely not cool in the slightest. He wore like skins of animals and rep and like totally tried to rep that. And I don't even know uh, how in the world he got away with it, but that's, that's how he lived his life. He was kind of a nomad. He was kind of a crazy guy. And yet, what does he say? He says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Who is the he that he's talking about? Well, obviously, we know that it's Jesus. So taking he out and putting Jesus in, Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. Students, what does that have to do? What does that mean in terms of your image? Well, ultimately, what it's saying is, God wants us to focus more on his image, his fame, his glory, than we do on our own. Why? Because our fame, our glory, our image, it's temporary right? It's, it's not going to last forever. And so John the Baptist is, is talking here and he just says, Hey, look, like I want to, I want to live my life. I want to do more things that bring glory and honor to Jesus and less things that bring honor and glory to myself because my honor, my glory, it's temporary. It will fade away. Okay. So, uh, ultimately then let's, let's get into Mark chapter eight. I, I alluded to it just a second ago, and now we're gonna, we're gonna look at it. This is an amazing passage of scripture. And Jesus is talking here, starting in chapter eight of verse, in verse 34, he says this. It says, in calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, 
but whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now, that's heavy stuff, right? Heavy, heavy words. Let's go back and let's look. Jesus has a conversation with the crowd. The disciples are there, they're hanging out. Jesus says, hey everybody, if anyone would come after me, if you're willing to follow me, if you're willing to put your image, your brand aside and, and follow me wholeheartedly and passionately and try and further my kingdom, here's what you're in for. You gotta deny yourself. And what does that mean? It means taking away the things that you that you may want, right? Like maybe the desire that you may have for your life to make tons and tons and tons and tons of money, right? That may line up with Jesus' plan for your life. It may not. Okay, but are you willing to give that up because his image is worth it to you? Just deny himself. Making decisions that, that make much of Jesus. Hey, I, I really want to do this, but that's not going to necessarily communicate the best message about my king. And so I'm not going to do that. Okay, because I care about his image. I care about his reputation. He says, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Now, Easter was a few weeks ago, uh, it feels like, maybe a month or two ago. I don't know, time is relative at this point. And ultimately, what did we celebrate? We celebrated the fact that the tomb is empty. Now, the tomb is empty, but before it was empty, it was filled with the king of the universe because he sacrificially gave his life and died on the cross. So what is Jesus saying here? He says, take up your cross and follow me. So essentially, Jesus is calling us, if we truly care about his image more than our image, he's calling us to lay our life down, our wants, our needs, our desires, and saying, King Jesus, you are worthy of my life. You're worthy of my attention, my wholehearted devotion. I want to follow you wherever you lead me. And then he says, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake in the gospels will save it. There's this inverse relationship, right? It's kind of upside down. The kingdom of God sometimes compared to the world and oftentimes compared to the world is upside down because Jesus says, hey, if you want to save your life, if you're going in this, in this world to build up a bunch of resources and protect yourself, ultimately everybody will die. That's just a given. That's a guarantee. That's not my words. Those are, those are God's words. Everyone will die. Okay. But here's the interesting thing. It says, whoever loses his life for my sake in the gospels will save it. So this is just a personal opinion, but I would rather lose my life fighting for the timeless things of the gospel, projecting Jesus's image and making him famous, knowing that that's going to last into eternity, than fruitlessly and, and uh, discouragingly and frustratingly trying to project my own image and, and further my own brand. Right? Does that make sense to you? Because ultimately, Kyle, here on earth, temporary. My soul, my relationship with Jesus, eternal. And so Jesus says, hey, look, if you're trying to save your life in this world, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, if you pursue me and pursue everything that I am and everything that I want for you and for your life, then ultimately you're going to find your life. There's that inverse. There's that paradox. Jesus says, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? I would encourage you at some point, don't do it right now because that would low key offend me, uh, but go to Google and search famous celebrities and emptiness, something like that, okay? Maybe you change some of the wording and stuff, but there have been multiple celebrities. Tom Brady is one of them, a star football player. Uh, Jim Carrey, a very famous actor would be another, who have come out publicly and said, Hey, there's got to be more to this life than money and stuff, possessions, fame. They're realizing that we were created for a relationship with our creator. And anything outside of that is empty. It's hollow. It doesn't last. And so Jesus says, hey, you can gain the whole world, but if you lose your soul in eternity, what was it for? What does it matter? It doesn't matter. Verse 37, for what can a man give in return for his soul? Your soul, your relationship with God or lack thereof is insanely, insanely important, students. 
All right, let's finish up. He says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed. Y'all, those are, those are scary, frightening, convicting words. So what I, what I want you to hear as we conclude right now, ultimately, it's this, that your relationship with Jesus needs to be the most important relationship that you have. And that relationship should lead you, should propel you, should compel you to, instead of focusing on your image, your followers, your likes, whatever, you focus instead, hey, what does Jesus want me to do? How does Jesus want me to further his kingdom with my gifts, my talents, my abilities? Because yes, image is everything, but Jesus's image is eternal. So find, find some things that you can do um, as a result of this. Maybe, maybe evaluate your social media habits and maybe take a step back and go, mm, I need to focus less on trying to portray my image and use my social media to portray Jesus's image more. Maybe you need to just have a conversation with God right now and just say, God, I'm sorry for, for trying to further my, my kingdom, my image, instead of focusing on your kingdom in your image. Let's pray. God, thank you so very much uh, for this day. Thank you for these students. Um, God, I'm just praying for them so hard that you would help them finish out this semester of school well and strong. I know that the last uh, six or seven or eight, nine weeks have just been absolutely chaotic and everything feels upside down and, and everything is so confusing. And so God, I just pray that you would remind them how much you love them, how much you're for them, that you have not abandoned them, that you're still with them in the midst of these days. And God, we're just praying continuously again um, for the eradication of this virus, that you would bring healing and give wisdom and energy and strength to everybody that is so uh, faithfully fighting this virus across the globe. We love you, God, and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Students, thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. Remember, use your image, use your influence, use your brand to make much of your king and not of yourself. We'll see you soon.